Welcome to Kingdom Theology. I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we're going to continue to talk about mid-Acts dispensationalism, also known as a Pauline dispensationalism. I already posted a video kind of introducing what that system is and why it is dangerous. And now over the next four videos or so, we want to go in and kind of lay a foundation of what they believe and why it is unbiblical. And so in this video, we're going to jump into the ideas of the distinction that they make between the mystery that was revealed to Paul in the New Testament and the Old Testament prophecies that were preached by Peter, James, John, Jesus, and all those except for Paul. And so we want to see what they have in their mind when they're making this distinction. They make this distinction because in Pauline dispensationalism, they want to make sure that Paul is our apostle. We follow his gospel, not the gospel of the kingdom that was preached by the other apostles and by Jesus, but only Paul's gospel of grace, that he is the one, his letters are written for our dispensation, for our for our reading, and we're supposed to apply them. We don't apply Peter, James, and John, their epistles. We don't apply the gospels because those were preached to the Jews. This is their main uh, idea of dividing. They divide the apostles from Paul. They divide... Uh, many things, but that's the main thing that divine here. So they want to make this distinction between mystery that Paul appeals to and prophecy that the other apostles appeal to. So let's go and turn to Acts chapter 3, start in verse 19. It says this, this is Peter preaching to the Jews. He says, therefore repent and be converted that your sins may be wiped away, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the one who previously was preached to you, Jesus Christ, whom the heavens must receive until the time of restoring what God has spoken through all his holy prophets since the world began. So this is not something new. This is something that has been spoken since the world began. It's the prophecies about Jesus Christ and his coming kingdom. And so they, whenever those in the mid-Acts group will bring you to this passage, they will say, see, this has been known since the beginning of the world. And then they'll flip over to Romans chapter 16 and talk about how Paul speaks about the mystery that he received. Paul speaking to the church in Romans 16 verse 25 says, Now to him who has power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret for long ages past. So here we see that Paul is not talking about prophecy. He's talking about a mystery that he was received that wasn't revealed in past ages. We just saw in Acts chapter 3 that prophecy was revealed from the beginning. But this is obviously something distinct, something different because it wasn't revealed until Paul. This would be the claim of those in the mid-Acts group. This is what they would say and how they would divide it. Now, what I found is there are certain kind of theologies that are, are difficult to wrestle through. If you are trying to understand Romans chapter 9, and you've heard the Calvinist perspective and the Arminian perspective, the provisionist perspective, the, uh, uh, you've heard the, all the different perspectives on that, it's still something hard to wrestle with. There's context that has to be wrestled with. It's not so simple that you just go to it and everybody knows what it says and everybody agrees about it. But a lot of the proof texts that are used in this mid-Acts dispensationalism are very simple to understand. You just have to go and read the context of the passage because the system is built not on trying to find out what the scripture says and then develop that into a kind of overarching understanding. Instead, mid-Acts dispensationalism, dispensationalism in general, starts with an idea. It starts with an idea of things that are divided, and then you come to the scripture and you make sure you keep those things separate. And so in mid-Acts, they keep this idea of mystery separate from prophecy. But when we take a closer look, let's go ahead and stay right here in Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him who has power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret for long ages past but now is revealed by the prophetic scriptures according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all the Gentiles for the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to him be glory forever. Amen. We notice that in verse 25 it talks about the revelation of the mystery that was kept hidden but is now revealed, verse 26, by the prophetic scriptures. In other words, by reading the prophetic scriptures, we're able to now understand the mystery that was written in them. We see this if we flip back to Romans chapter 1. 
see here, Romans chapter 1, where he starts. He starts kind of where he left, where he ends off in Romans. Starting in verse 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. So this is the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So the gospel was promised through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures from the time the world began. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead, through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience of faith among all nations in his name, among whom you are also called by Jesus Christ to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here again, it connects that what Paul is preaching, the gospel of God that he is proclaiming, that he later says in, in verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So this gospel of God was promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning Jesus Christ. Just like we saw at the end, it said that it was uh, the mystery was connected with the prophetic scriptures. What is it that those in the mid-Acts group are missing? They're missing the connection between the mystery, the revelation of the mystery, and the prophetic scriptures. If you remember, uh, Jesus would often tell his disciples several times, he told his disciples, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to be crucified, and then I'm going to be raised from the dead. Did they understand that? No, they didn't understand that. It was written in the scriptures. We read that Psalm, uh, Psalm 22, we read in Isaiah 53, we read all over the scriptures that the Messiah was going to suffer and die, but then be raised from the dead, and that he was going to be glorified. So that was given in the prophetic scriptures, but people did not understand it. Since they did not understand it, then they didn't understand what Jesus was doing. So what is the revelation of the mystery? The prophetic scriptures were given, but they were not understood until our uh, until the, the time of the church when the apostles came and Jesus revealed the mystery to the apostles, including Paul, so that they would understand what the prophetic scriptures meant. Let's go ahead and look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. It says, Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of, your, of the grace that should come to you have inquired and searched diligently. So those that prophesied about Christ, they searched diligently to try to understand what was being they were prophesying about. Seeking the events and the time the Spirit of Christ who was within them signified when he foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. So the prophets were talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's what they were talking about, that all nations would be blessed through him, that all the nations would flood to Jerusalem and they would learn from the Lord. And so they would learn the ways of Yahweh. So they, this is what the prophets were were prophesying, but they didn't understand what was going on. Verse 12, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you concerning the things which are now reported to you by those who have, have preached the gospel to you through the Holy Spirit, who was sent from heaven, things into which the angels desire to look. So what Peter is telling us is that the prophets long ago, when they prophesied these things, they were asking like, you know, who's this about? It's kind of like whenever uh, the Ethiopian eunuch was riding in his chariot and then Philip came up beside, and and Philip asked, you know, he was reading from the song, or Isaiah, I think, 52 or 53, and he says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I unless somebody explain this to me? And then Philip got up into the chariot with him and began to explain the prophetic scriptures that it was talking about Christ. Because when you go through Isaiah 53, you can ask, well, who's this talking about? Is this talking about Israel? No, because the suffering servant dies for Israel, but it's also kind of referring to as it's a, it's a confusing and hard to understand until we come to the new covenant when Jesus reveals the truth and the revelation of the mystery to the apostles. Then they understand the gospel and they understand the prophetic scriptures. But even the ones that were writing in the past, the prophets, they didn't fully understand exactly what they were talking about. They knew by the spirit of God what to say, but it was revealed to them, you're writing that something that is going to come to pass later. You don't understand it now, but you're serving those that are going to come in the future. Future. We can see something similar if we flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, this was writing about the history of Israel and their rebellion against God. And then in verse 11, it says, Now all these things happened to them for examples. They were written as an admonition to us upon whom the ends of the ages have come. In other words, the things that happened in the Old Testament and the prophecies that were given in the Old Testament, even though it happened to them and they prophesied it, they didn't know what, it was going, what we were going to receive in the new covenant in Jesus Christ. 
And so when it comes to the new covenant and the apostles received the revelation of the mystery, then we're able to understand the Old Testament scripture. So were these things spoken about from the beginning of the world, as it said in Acts chapter 3? Yes, indeed they were. They were prophesied by all the prophets from the beginning of the world. But was it a mystery that was kept hidden from ages past? Yes, indeed it was a mystery because they did not understand the prophecies. This is what those in the mid-Acts dispensationalism either do not understand or refuse to understand, is that the mystery is to understand the prophetic meaning of the Old Testament scriptures. And they didn't understand it then. It was hidden from them, just like the apostles didn't understand that Jesus was going to die and rise again until after it took place. Then they believed on the scriptures and they understood what had taken place. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go to chapter 2, verse, starting in verse 6 here. Go 6 to 10. Yet we speak wisdom among those who are mature, although not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age knew it, for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So here Paul tells us that what he is preaching to the church is a mystery. It's something that the, the, the people of this world cannot understand because they don't have the spirit of God. So they don't understand the mysteries of God. If we were to look over to, let's see here. If we flip to Ephesians chapter 1, let's see, start in verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Christ, which are in heaven and on earth. What is the plan? What is the mystery that's now been lavished and, and, and poured out with insight and wisdom upon the church, those that have the spirit of God? It's that Jesus Christ would be Lord of heaven and earth, that all things would be, be united under his lordship. So going back to 1 Corinthians, we see that if the rulers of this age had known that what, what was prophesied, if they would have understood the Old Testament prophets, if they would have understood what was the mystery and the plan that God had, the eternal purpose of God, then they would not have crucified Christ. We flip to Acts 13, starting in verse 26. Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those of you who fear God, the word of this salvation has been sent to us because those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, the rulers of this world, and their rulers did not know him. In condemning him, they have fulfilled the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath. Now, one thing I want us to notice is that Paul is proclaiming from the prophetic scriptures what is being fulfilled. This is him proclaiming the mystery. He's explaining what has taken place in fulfillment of the prophetic scriptures. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of scripture. So in condemning them, they have fulfilled the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath. Though they found in him no cause worthy of death, yet they asked Pilate to have him killed. Going on. When they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and many days, and for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now witnesses to the people. So what was it that they didn't understand the mystery? The mystery that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, they didn't understand that secret hidden mystery. That secret hidden mystery which was revealed in the scriptures, which Jesus was fulfilled because of their ignorance, because they rejected the truth, they rejected the scriptures, they crucified Jesus Christ, which fulfilled the scriptures. That is the mystery, okay? Now if we flip over to uh, Acts chapter 3, going back to where we started. Acts chapter 3. So we started reading earlier in Acts chapter 3, this is one of the proof texts that uh, the mystery and the prophecy is different in starting in verse 19. But let's go start back up in verse 17. Now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance as did your rulers, but what God foretold through all the prophets that his Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. So the mystery that Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 what he also mentioned in Acts chapter 13, Peter is mentioning the same thing. This mystery that was 
reveal. Let's go ahead and look at, kind of tie this together. Let's look at, uh, I've kind of referenced it, but let's go to Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 44, this is after the resurrection of Christ. He said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He opened their minds to understand the scripture. So this is revelation of the mystery. Revelation of the mystery that was hidden in God in ages past, though it was revealed through the prophets, they didn't know what they were talking about. They were longing to look into understand these things, but they were told that it was for us that it was going to be revealed. So they prophesied the things, but they did not understand them. That was the mystery, okay? Revealed the mystery is something that was actually given, but it wasn't yet made known and open to our understanding until now. So this is when it happened in verse 45. Then he opened their mind to understand the scriptures. And he tells them what was written in the scriptures. Verse 46, he said to them, Thus it is written, and accordingly it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. That is the gospel. Jesus died and rose again. That's what he revealed to them. Okay, many of those in the, the mid-Acts dispensationalist group will say, no, the gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, that Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried, and that he rose from the dead according to the scripture, and that's what Paul preached. That's also what Jesus revealed to the apostles here after his resurrection from the dead. But he goes on in verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So not only was it that Jesus was fulfilling the scriptures by dying and rising again, coming into his kingdom through suffering, not only was that fulfilled, but also the mystery was that then the good news of forgiveness of sins was going to be proclaimed into all nations through the name of Jesus Christ. Not just Jew, but also Gentile. As Paul said, that the gospel is the power of God for salvation for all who believe, first for the Jew, but also for the Gentile. And so this was the revelation, the opening of their eyes that was given. They understood the scripture. So the mystery... The mystery that was revealed was the understanding and the proper interpretation of what was prophesied in the Old Testament that they did not yet understand. We see this more if we go over to Ephesians chapter 3. Paul talks about it. Let's see if I can get there. Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 1 says this, Paul speaking, For this reason, I, Paul, am a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. You may have heard of the administration of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how by revelation he made known to me the mystery. Okay? As I have written briefly already, by which when you, and where did he re write, re read, uh, write briefly? In chapter 1, when he said in verse 8, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Christ, which are in heaven and, and on our earth, to make him Lord of all. Okay, verse four. By which when you read it, you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets. So was it made known? Was it made known that they understood what was written in the Old Testament? They did not. It was written down, inspired by the Holy Spirit, but they did not have interpretation. Did the apostles know? Did the apostles, when they were walking with Jesus, understand that the Lord of glory had to be crucified? They did not. Did he have, they understand that he was going to be raised from the dead? They did not. Even he spoke it to them, and they still did not get it. But after he was risen from the dead, he opened their mind to understand the scriptures. Then they understood that the Christ was to suffer, to die, to rise from the dead, and that in his name all nations could come to faith and all nations could come to forgiveness. Not just Jews, but also Gentiles. So which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Not just one apostle, not just the apostle Paul, but the, apostle, the holy apostles and prophets of the new covenant, they received this mystery. They understood the meaning of the Old Testament scriptures. In the Old Testament, they prophesied by the Spirit of God. In the New Testament, the apostles and prophets understood the fulfillment of that by looking at Jesus Christ. As Jesus said in John chapter 5, you search the scriptures because in them you think that you have life, but they testify about me, but you refuse to come to me that you might have life. The scriptures are about Jesus Christ. But it goes on. 
The Holy, so this mystery that was revealed to the apostles, not just one apostle, but to the apostles, not just, oh, Paul is our apostle and he reveals this thing and we just follow him. No, to the apostles and prophets, as we read, they were first revealed. It was first revealed to the, the 11 after Jesus was risen from the dead in Luke chapter 24. But now also to Paul, who was born out of season in verse six, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. So, in Jesus Christ, by the gospel, here's the mystery. Jesus died and rose again. He is king and Lord of all of heaven and earth. This is the eternal plan of God. And through him, all the nations can believe and receive the forgiveness of sin. Both Jew and Gentile become partakers, fellow partakers of in Christ by the gospel. So this is the mystery. It's only a mystery because in the Old Testament, they didn't understand it. And now it's a revealed, a revelation and a revealed mystery because now in the new covenant, the apostles and prophets have an understanding of these things. Let's go back and close with uh, Acts chapter 2. So I want us to see that Jesus is indeed the fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures and that his fulfilling that is the gospel, that is the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations, that we didn't know how he was going to fulfill it, but here we see it. On the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter got up and he began to proclaim the gospel. He began to proclaim that, that Jesus of Nazareth, that he was crucified. And he goes on here, 25. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will dwell in hope for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy with your presence. Now, this is not about David. This is about Jesus Christ. That's why he says in verse 29, Brothers, I may speak confidently to you concerning the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. But being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn an oath to him that of his seed, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Okay. David was given a prophecy that one of his his descendants was going to be raised from the dead and seated on his throne, the throne of David. The king of Israel was going to be established on his throne. Verse 31, when did this get fulfilled? When did the Messiah sit on the throne of David? Verse 31, he foresaw this and spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his, soul, his flesh see corruption. God raised up this Jesus of which we are all witnesses, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David has not ascended to the heavens, yet he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel assuredly know that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. David prophesied that he was going to have a son that would be seated on the throne of David forever. This is, was fulfilled by Jesus rising from the dead and going and seating at the right hand of God. He is now seated on the throne of David and his kingdom will have no end. He is Lord not only of earth, but he is Lord of heaven and earth. In the Old Testament, they thought that King David would come and there would only be a, a, you know, a, an earthly kingdom. But Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's why it said in Ephesians chapter one, the eternal purpose of God that was hidden in, for ages in God, in his own counsel, that he, would make, that he would unite all things, both heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ is Lord of heaven and earth because he went to the cross, as it says in Philippians chapter two, too, that he was obedient, even obedient to the point of death. Therefore, because he was obedient to death, God raised him from the dead and gave him the name that is above every other name, not only Lord of Jerusalem, not only Lord of all this earth, but Lord of heaven and earth. All authority has been given to him. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies, but the prophecies when they were given were not understood until the apostles and prophets of the generation. When Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, he opened their mind. He gave them revelation of the mystery so that they could understand the prophetic meaning of the scripture. This is why if we turn back to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. This is why Paul says this. Paul, verse 1, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel of God about Jesus Christ, 
which he promised beforehand through his prophets in his holy scriptures. This was the promise of the scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience of faith among all nations for his name. So this idea that there is a distinction between the prophetic scriptures and the fulfillment of that and the gospel of the kingdom separated completely from the revelation that was given to Apostle Paul only of the gospel of grace, this is not biblical. This, when we just read the scriptures, when we just read what they're plainly saying, we understand that the prophets prophesied of Jesus Christ. He fulfilled that prophecy. Then he opened the minds and the hearts of the apostles, including Paul, to understand the fulfillment, how he fulfilled the scriptures. And then that is proclaimed as the gospel, the good news, not only to Jew, but also to Gentile, that all could believe in him and receive the forgiveness of sins and become saints of God the people of God, the children of God. So I hope this has been helpful to you. We, uh, God willing, we'll go into a few other of the basic tenets of this uh, Pauline dispensationalist system in the upcoming videos in this series. Uh, if you found this helpful, go ahead and like and share it. That helps with the algorithm. And go ahead, and if you're not subscribed already and you're interested in learning things from a gospel perspective, a, 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 you know, a, a kingdom-minded perspective that we live for Jesus Christ and understand the scripture's theology in a way that can be practiced, in a way that can help us avoid the errors that are floating around in our day, then I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. So we, we right now we're doing about a video a day, uh, but uh, as time, as, as I kind of lose uh, the freedom of time, I'm getting busy soon, then I'll start making at least three videos a week uh, God willing. And so I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe and to follow along with our studies. Hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.